Hey everybody, Biker Geek here. Today I am going to be working on my pop-up trailer that we bought a couple months ago. The electrical system needs to be changed, specifically the 12 volt power converter. So I'm going to be replacing the 12 amp Elixir CS1200 with a newer WFCO 25 amp. I'll get the part number and put it in the put it in the uh, description and so let's get started okay this is the unit i am replacing this is the elixir cs1200 which is what originally came on this 2002 coleman yuma and as you can see there's a molex connector in the back there's one wire that that was loose I thought I was going to have to cut and just kind of use wire nuts on these uh, connectors, but I may be able to salvage this and reuse the Molex connector. This is the trailer's one, and there's one wire that came off, so I just need to pop the Molex pin and re-solder it on. This particular one is on the unit, and the new unit doesn't have one, so I'm going to see if I can uh, pop this. This thing has... A connector like this this went on this one like this so I can actually get to the Molex pins and maybe unsolder them and reuse them we'll see I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this out and then uh, we'll take it from there I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of the wiring so I know what goes where and then we'll go from there we'll be okay back. sorry about that I'm switching to my other camera here view might not be that well but I need my hands free to uh, to remove this so the first thing I'm gonna do is there are some screws there's some screws at the front that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these four screws and then I'm gonna pull the unit out so I can disconnect the other wires And I need a screwdriver to do that. And let's go ahead and get those out. Let's hope that uh, the new unit just slides right in. Um, I've seen some people where they've had to make modifications on it. I'm just going to set these up here. down here that was preventing me from pulling it out it's just one of those little cable holders so I'm going to pull that out see if I can get this out there is some interference on the wire okay I've got it coming out okay I've got the camera a little closer now so hopefully it'll uh it'll be able to be seen here this here is your shore power I'm going to go ahead and remove the top plate on this because that's where it's connecting in. I'm going to need to take this off. Set the wires up here. Here's the plate. So here's the hornet's nest that's in here. Okay, shore power wire. I'm going to go ahead and remove these wires because they're going to have to come off anyway. Maybe. 
Let's go ahead and loosen this up so I can get this out once it is set up. Shoot, looks like I'm going to need a regular slotted screwdriver. So, because those are going to need to be removed there. Okay, this is coming from shore power, so I can go ahead and remove this. I'm not sure where this part's going. This must be going to a breaker down here. Those are going to have to be removed as well. I'm going to go ahead and remove this one. And that one's off. And let's go ahead and remove this one because it's going to have to come off. Let's just hope I remember where everything goes to. Okay, I've got a slotted screwdriver. I've got these remarks. So these two, I think, are to the breakers. Um, I know one of these went to one. I'm going to have to look at the video or read the wiring diagrams. I'm going to need to remove these out here with this slotted screwdriver. This is from the shore power. That comes out. And this looks like these are from the actual 120 volt AC outlets, which are ground, so I assume this is a grounding block. So let's get that out of here. God, what a mess. Okay, I gotta get this one out, and then I can pull the shore power out, then I'll, I'll work on the other ones. All right. Okay, shore power wire is disconnected. Let's go ahead and oopsie. Let's go ahead and pull that out. Make it a lot easier to work with in here. Alright, let's hope you could still see. And pardon me. The way this thing sits is not exactly kosher. Trying to get it so it sits up a little bit better. Now let's see if I can see anything better. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so now you've got this grounding block here that you've got more wires. And these are these are the AC outlets, the 120 volt. So this is a grounding block here, I would assume, because it's bare copper wire coming out. So I've got these disconnected. Well, I've got one loose and now I've got the other one here. God, removing this is a lot more of a pain than I thought it would be. Uh, God, I would think I'd need equipment like pliers. Oh my goodness. Duh. What an idiot I am sometimes. No comments from the peanut gallery. Alright, so I'm going to pull this one. This one went to this 120 volt outlet. So I'm going to pull this one out. Oh wait, you've still got a wire in there. So let's go ahead and make these smoother so I can just pull this out. The camera falls, I'm sorry. I really don't want to cut any wire because it's already short. It looks like somebody did work on this before. And it looks like I'm going to have to pop that grommet out. Pop that out without any without screwing anything else up. That grommet does not want to let the wire go. There it goes. That's better. Okay, so that's one wire out. Wish I knew which one. Oh, shit, I just realized. One's got to go to the 120 volt, and one's got to go to the regular 100. Well, I'm not going to be using an air conditioner, so it doesn't really matter. Um, all right, so now let's get this one out. 
This actually looks maybe like a smaller wire. I don't know. Let's go ahead and get this. This is off of here. Oh, there's another block here. So I'm assuming this is the smaller one because it's got a smaller wire nut and it's got a smaller wire gauge on it. So I'm going to keep these separate. I'm going to wire this to the 15 amp rather than to the 30 amp. And we'll take it from there. Just go ahead and keep track of that. Let's go ahead and pop this one out. I'm going to pop this grommet up too. It does not. There you go. Oops, looks like I missed one. This one looks like I've got another wire connector in the back. Don't know if you can see it there. I can't see it with the camera recording, so I'm just gonna hold it here. I hope you guys can see it. It's just right down here. That's holding the rest of the wires in, so I've got to disconnect that. Here's another ground wire here I've got to take out. That's to the chassis ground. That's very important. There we go. So, the unit is out. Let's take a look at it. Switch to my other video here. like we just have to get these two screws here and take them out and work on that. There's one and let's get that other one. And that's a tight one. Sorry I'm having to hold the camera while I do this too so Okay, and that one's out. Pop this plate. And there's your breaker. I guess it just pulls off. I'll have to look at it. I'll be right back. Okay, so the breaker just did just lift it up and popped out. So that's not a problem. Um, I'm looking at the wires here. And you can see the thicker gauge wire went to the 20 amp fuse. So that is, I confirmed my... Uh, my hypothesis that the thicker uh, wire goes to the thicker or the bigger amperage breaker so I'm going to re be rewiring that one part again. Incidentally I found the inline fuse here. I'm going to check it because that might be why it wasn't working but we still need a new one of these units because they're they are prone to failure. So let's see if I can get this fuse out. Yeah it's, it's screwing out. So let's take a look at it and it is toast. So that might have been our problem to begin with. I'm thinking so. <laughs> so one thing when diagnosing problems, because I looked all over for this fuse and I couldn't find it and I couldn't find any wiring diagrams that outlined where it was for this particular unit. But if you look at it, it's toast. So. Whatever I put in now, I'm sure it's going to work. So let's get started on that. I'm going to go take this unit outside and see if I can work on the Molex connector and desolder it. From Way back. left to right, red, blue, white, blue with yellow stripe, and blue. Like that. All right, let's keep them that. That's the top view, the red and the blue, and then white's under red, blue with yellow stripes under blue, and 
blue is in the bottom left or yeah another blue the smaller gauge blue is in the bottom okay left. so i've got the molex plug almost off it's a bear to get off unless you have the right equipment but there's a little tab under here on each side that you have to push simultaneously so you can pull this little plug off I'm going to go ahead and mark this with a magic marker so I can know which is which side goes on. Then I'm going to work on uh, desoldering the Molex pens. Okay, basically what I did here was since I couldn't reuse the Molex pins, I went ahead and cut the wires at the back of the thing and uh, used, these are heat shrink connectors, so basically you crimp them and then you heat shrink them. So I'm going to splice these onto the new unit and then uh, reconnect. I've already soldered the inside pl Molex plug to get it back together. So let's hope it works. And I'll get back to you as soon as I've uh, resoldered these or I've attached okay. these to the new unit. This is the new unit here. This is a WFCO WF-8725. It's a 25 amp unit. And over here is where the breakers go in. And here's those fuses that you see before. Notice this one has already has a reverse polarity one in it. So I'm not gonna need the new one of those. And right now on the back are the wires that I'm going to have to splice into the, uh, the new one or the old Molex plug that I cut off. So I'm gonna work on that next and splice those. I'm gonna have to read the color codes because they look a little different here. So once I get that done, I'll be back as I have to hook the breaker in and everything else. Okay, since the wiring is different, I had to kind of match the wiring that was on the old one with the new one, essentially. Uh, on this one, white and red were the same. However, and you had blue, it was the same. Blue went to circuit number one, whereas here... Um, the blue with white stripe went to circuit number two. Circuit number two on this one is yellow. Um, let's see, blue with white stripe. Blue and yellow striped is circuit number three. Circuit number three on this one is green. And red is circuit number four, but that's universal. So I went ahead and hooked those up. I liked, uh, I saved most of the pigtail from the old unit and I heat, I crimped and heat shrinked the tubing on the wires and I burned the insulation just a tad. So I'm gonna be, after all, I make sure all this is working, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap some uh, electrical tape around it. So now we need to go to the inside and finish fixing the plug uh, that's in there. I'll show you that here. I uh, went ahead and soldered the old Molex connector on there. So that's soldered on. I'm going to go get some heat shrink tubing and put that around it and then connect it back into the plug and then we're going to work on connecting this up to the unit. And we'll be back. Okay, it's been kind of a interesting afternoon. So now with this, I've got it hooked into the breaker. I've got a wire coming off to the breaker on the 15 amp side or the 20 amp side going to shore power, the black wire on shore power. The green wire on shore power is going to the chassis, the ground, and the white wire is going to neutral. Now I've also got the black wire from the battery coming into the 15 amp circuit and then I've got um, the first electrical the heavy-duty circuit uh, normally would be used for like air conditioning or something that's going into the other black wire into the there's a black wire attached to the back of the uh, back of the converter that I couldn't figure out that goes to the black wire and then you've got the ground going to the chassis ground and you got the white going to neutral now I'm going to need to hook the other one up and the same way connect it in to black and chassis neutral the 15 the 20 amp is mainly for electrical the 15 is for the battery so I'm going to go ahead and hook this one up I have tested it already both 
uh, when I plug it into shore power it does function without the battery loaded and I went and checked the output to the battery and I'm getting like 16 volt charging 16 or 17 volts uh, charging so it is charging the battery once it's on as well let me go ahead and get the rest of this hooked up and then we'll do a final test all right, I've got all the wires hooked up. It hasn't been remounted and I haven't put the cover on it, so but I still wanted to test things out. So let's go ahead and turn the breakers on. It is plugged into shore power. So I'm going to turn these on and see how everything goes. Okay, the fan turns on briefly. And I have electrical power over to this light. Now let's check and see if I've got electrical power to my 6 volt or my 12 volt. Okay, that's working. So I have 12 volt power on both circuits. Awesome. All right, now what we need to do is we need to chip plug in this socket over on this side. I'm going to pause and do that here. Okay, now I'm going to plug this socket in over to this outlet and see if it uh, turns on there as well. Awesome. We are in business with 12 volt shore power before I couldn't even get the 12 volt with it not plugged into the battery I would get no shore power or no electrical power to my 12 volt or my 6 volt uh, or sorry my 12 volt operated lamps up here but I would get shore power to my sockets now I've got it to both now I'm gonna hook up the battery okay it's unplugged from shore power I'm gonna it's plugged into the battery so I'm gonna see if my 12 volt lights work okay that one works let's go back over here and that one works awesome all right so now we're hooked up to everything 12 volt works even when it's plugged into the shore uh power and it also works with just the battery and the battery is charging with shore power connected. I'm going to go ahead and plug, uh, put the main panel on this and mount this back on and clean up and I'll All be right. back. It is connected up to the battery and it is connected up to shore power as you can see and I've got panel inside and all mounted all the breakers are turned on so we're going to test first off my 6 volt or 12 volt I keep saying 6 volt I don't know why okay so I got 12 volt volt here and I'm gonna try 12 volt here and that's working too so now we're gonna test the socket here see if this turns on it's a red light because it was from Halloween All right, so we're gonna plug that in and we have socket power on this side and let's go over here we're gonna plug it into the 30 watt or 30 amp just to make sure it's working and here that is oops and that's working as well so we have all power so far so good I'm too tired to work on it anymore today but I'm gonna put it down and then next weekend I'm gonna let it run on power for a while and see how things go so bye